Welcome back everybody and today we are painting a Drow Elf Warrior. We're going to cover three different subjects here. Go over a couple different ways how to paint colored armor, how to paint Drow skin, and then finally we're going to have a bunch of people tell me that I pronounce Drow wrong. But first let's take care of that colored armor. Since this is a Drill Warrior and she's pretty well armored up, didn't want to just do straight steel silver armor with the black or brown wash. Want to add a little more color into the miniature. So that's what we're going to do. Starting off with just a base coat of our Vallejo Model Air gunmetal to start with. And then we're going to start mixing in a little bit of violet. The application here is pretty much the same as I'd be doing if I was... Uh, putting down a spot wash but i'm trying to get the violet into uh, the shaded areas into the recesses uh, not being super careful at this point because uh, we're going to clean it up at the end For the deeper recesses where we really need that shade, have some black mixed in with our violets. Uh, this is a bit more uh, precisely applied than just a straight violet because we just want to get it any areas where we want that darker shade or need to add a dark line between two different areas. With our shade and our colors laid in, now we can go back and reapply our gunmetal wherever necessary. This seems like it's a bit repetitive, but actually I really like to lay the colors down first then worry about cleaning them up afterwards. Also putting down a thin layer of gunmetal now helps to blend in our violet a little bit better into the rest of our regular steel color metallics. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and do an edge highlight with a little steel added to our gunmetal. So that is one way you could do colored armor. Here is a, another way that's much more intense. Here I am applying, I, I wanna call it a very thick wash, but technically it's just slightly thinned paint. Uh, I'm, but I'm applying black red, slightly thinned over Vallejo Model Air Metallic Rust. And the idea is I want just a smidgen of that metallic sheen just to uh, slightly show through. Uh, essentially, I'm putting like a very heavy red tint over it. Over our very heavily tinted armor, now doing highlights with bright bronze and red ink. And you can mix in inks with various colored uh, metallics to get different sheens as well. So you can start here if you want. Uh, I wanted something a deeper red. That's why I went with the, uh, the heavy black red first rather than mixing in uh, ink with the metallic and just reserving this instead for the highlights. Thank you. 
then to tint it even more, now applying a glaze of red ink. A very heavy glaze, by the way. It's almost pure ink uh, because I want to tint those highlights a little bit more, much more than uh, what we would get just by mixing those two colors together. And then we finish off with black ink in the recesses to get our necessary contrast. Painting of the interior of the cloak, not much to say here. I kept it very simple and just went with violet to coincide with our violet armor. For the outer cloak, we are going with red. Once again, it balances with the color of our armor very nicely. And a couple of tidbits here, uh, kind of playing around. I've been playing around with different red recipes lately because my favorite red I ran out of and I can't get it anymore. So I've been toying around with different red highlights and shades. So this may be a new recipe if you haven't seen uh, me do this before. Can't remember if I had. Secondly, the cloak is a little plain. This can really use some sort of pattern on the back. Uh, when I started painting this figure, I actually wanted an uh, adventurer type drow warrior. I didn't want uh, a standard NPC drow warrior, but it, the colors I ended up using just it ended up looking very typical drow warrior. So uh, I didn't want to do a, a spider web or something like that. Uh, but it would fit very well on this miniature if you choose to do something, some sort of pattern. But uh, a spider web would be relatively easy to do and it'd be quite fitting.
So here's the part everyone's been waiting for, how to paint drove flesh. And it's gonna go by real quick because we only have a face to deal with. There's a couple different ways you can go with drove uh, skin. Kind of depends on whatever you want to do. Uh, a lot of people go with the straight, uh, pure coal black. Uh, some go more to the brown range, some go more to the purple range. Uh, in this instance, I decided to go more with the purple skin tone. And it's a very simple recipe. All I'm using is Army Painter tanned flesh with uh, royal purple mixed in. And just proceeding through the up to the highlights, just adding more of the tanned flesh or removing the royal purple, however you want to view it. If you wanted to do a more brown skin tone, like the, uh, I really like the Larry Elmore depictions in his paintings of Drill Warriors, a very nice, lovely brown skin. Uh, you can probably use the same recipe here, just reduce the amount of royal purple in the mix if you're looking for something very simple. Uh, you may have to add an additional highlight step after the tanned flesh, maybe mixing in a light flush color, but this should be, this mixture right here should be pretty close to do either one. For the hair, we're going to tone it down just a little bit rather than just going with simple, straight, pure white. And that's because having uh, a just a, a shock of white on top of the miniature can be uh, very visually distracting. So we want to tone it down just a little bit, uh, mix in some cold gray with it. So it's a, a little bit more in sync with how we painted the rest of the miniature. And there we go, we are done. And that was a fairly easy peasy project. We went over a couple different ways of how you can do colored armor and draw skin as well. The cloak is rather plain just because I couldn't really decide what to paint on it. Uh, but you know what, rather than letting the miniature sit half finished, I finished the rest of the miniature and flat varnished it and put it in the case. Uh, because something like that you can always come back to at a later date. You could paint over your flat varnish at any time. So if I ever get the inspiration of what to paint on the cloak, I can pull this thing back out, add it, and then put it back in the case. So it's better than having it sit around half finished. So that is it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Dro. Give me liberty or give me death, but with dinner I'll have stuffing.